Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for choosing to watch this video. Today we're looking at the R36S and the K36. Both offer impressive capabilities at an affordable price point. But which one comes out on top? They are extremely similar, but there are some clear differences that I have been able to uncover. So watch on to find out what I think of these two units and which one I would recommend. Before we move on, please remember that my videos are based off of research. So although I have not personally tested these, I do endeavor to look over them extensively. My aim is to provide you with a concise overview that is jam-packed with facts found by multiple reviewers. So hopefully you find some value from the video as I genuinely enjoy doing these comparisons and engaging with you guys in the comments. If you do find it helpful, please remember to like, subscribe and share as it really helps the channel out. First off, let's take a look at the specs. The R36S and the K36 are essentially the same when it comes to specs. Both have the same chipset, RAM, screen and battery. The main differences lies in the firmware and the connectivity options. The R36S runs ArcOS and supports Wi-Fi via USB dongle or connection to your phone. The K36 on the other hand runs Emulec or in some cases Amberelec firmware and lacks Wi-Fi support. The R36S's ability to connect to Wi-Fi allows for easier firmware updates and consequently potential performance improvements over time. This feature gives it a slight advantage in long-term usability and performance optimizations. It also looks like the firmware differences play a role in overall gameplay on higher-end systems. But more on that when we discuss performance later. Let's look at ergonomics and design first. While both handouts sport a vertical form factor, they differ in their ergonomic approaches. The R36S has a flat back design that is more comfortable for extended gaming sessions for some reviewers. It has a front firing mono speaker that in my opinion is better as the sound is directed to you. Unfortunately it has slightly stiffer buttons and the d-pad is quite tight according to those who have tried it. It also has standard switch style analog sticks which are not extremely precise. The K36 on the other hand has what is meant to be ergonomic backs on the back but some users find this less comfortable for long play sessions. It has slope trigger buttons, which is slightly better than the R36S. Unfortunately, this seems to be inadequate compensation for those who don't like the hand grips that are so close together, so keep that in mind. The K36 though does come with a more interesting design scheme on the front panel, which gives it a slightly better look aesthetically. For sound, it has a downfiring mono speaker, which most seem to think produces acceptable sound but its real highlight is its improved buttons and d-pad that has better responsiveness than the R36S according to most. The analog sticks are also apparently a lot more precise. So in terms of feel, the K36's improved controls may appeal to fighting game enthusiasts or those who prioritize button feel. However, the R36S's flatback design could be preferable for users planning marathon gaming sessions. Next, let's take a quick look at performance. Both the R36S and the K36 offer similar performance due to the shared hardware, so I'm not going to say too much about it. Both handhelds excel at emulating systems up to PlayStation 1, including NES, SNES, Genesis and Game Boy Advance. N64 and Dreamcast performance is hit or miss on both devices, with about 30-50% to of games running acceptably. However, when it comes to PSP, the R36S seems to have a slight edge according to those who tested it likely due to its Arc OS firmware optimizations. So if PSP gameplay is important to you, you may want to opt for the R36S. With all that said, let's take a look at the pros and cons to summarize. The R36S has Wi-Fi capability via dongle or connection to your phone. It has Arc OS firmware with frequent updates, and it is more comfortable for extended play sessions. It is also slightly better with PSP emulation, and it has active community support and development due to its popularity. On the downside, it has stiffer buttons and d-pad, and those standard analog sticks are not great. The trigger buttons are also not very ergonomic. The K36 has improved buttons and d-pad responsiveness, and analog sticks that are more precise. The trigger buttons are also sloped, which many users would prefer. Unfortunately, it has no Wi-Fi support, and it is less ergonomic for long gaming sessions. The Emulec firmware has fewer optimizations, and it has limited community support when compared to the R36S. So, which one should you choose? Well, you should choose the R36S if you value long-term support and frequent firmware updates, if comfort during extended gaming sessions is a priority for you, or if you want the option to add Wi-Fi connectivity, 
It's also a good choice if you're interested in a device with an active modding community. You should choose the K36S if button feel and responsiveness are top priorities for you, and if you prefer analog sticks that are more precise. It's also worth considering if you want a slightly more pleasing look on your device out of the box, and if you don't mind the lack of Wi-Fi. Firstly, I have to say that I thought I would like the K36 more due to those ergonomic hand grips, but it seems as though those are not as great as I thought it would be. The complete lack of Wi-Fi capability on it is also a deal breaker for me personally, so the R36S still stands out as the unit I would choose. That's just my opinion though. Hopefully I've given you enough detail here to make your own choice. If you want some more info on the R36S, you can click on the links on screen now for my video overviews on it. That's it for this one though. Have a nice day and I'll catch you in the next tech update.